Hello. Anissa, are you there? Can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I was just um, reviewing your website and one of the other podcasts that you did. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, you could use video, but I, um, oh, shoot. Hold on one sec. Okay. There we go. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, good. Yeah. So I don't usually use video on my podcast, but yeah, it's good okay. to see you. You want, I can turn on my camera so you can see who I am if you like, <laughs> and then I'll probably turn it off. Um, so this is me in my little workstation. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, thanks for joining me. I really liked, um, me. yeah, I really liked your, your background on your work with veterans and service members and yoga and um, PTSD and trauma. And that's one of the reasons why I thought it'd be really great to speak to you. So Cool. Well, I can't wait to answer your questions. Yeah. Now, do you want me to give you like an intro before we get started? Or do you want to just jump right into it? Whatever you want to do. It's your gig. I'm just okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, so just the logistics, I usually release one podcast episode per week. So it may take a little while for this episode to come out. So um, I will uh, tag you if you want on Facebook or wherever, whatever platform you think would be best for you. Um, that's absolutely fine. Can you send me the MP3 of this MP3? I will try to figure that out. I haven't done that before, but I will, <laughs> I'll ask my husband who's more techie. Let me see. Let me make a note of that MP3. So you could put it on your website. Is that correct? Exactly. Ah, perfect. Okay. Actually, I have a, an app coming out here in the next month. Ah, and nice. Put on my app. App. Okay, perfect. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. So what is the app going to have on it? Well, it's pretty much just going to be um, a, kind of a, a continuation of the website. Okay. Um, but the beautiful thing is, you know, I won't be held captive by Facebook algorithms. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. You know, iTunes, it'll be available, you know, at the App Store and Google Play. And so all across the world, people, you know, depending on their keywords that they put in, will be able to find it. Oh, be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Wonderful. So um, I will send, I'll figure out how to send you that MP3. Um, just so you know, this will all be edited out because I usually edit all my podcasts and, you know, make sure everything looks polished. Um, so we'll start by, oh my goodness, let me turn off my notifications. That would be good. Hold on one sec. Are you hearing that? Um, I no, did not. You didn't. Only I hear that. Okay, that's good. All right. So, so yeah, so usually my podcasts are around a half hour after editing. Um, I usually edit in your intro. So I'll read that on my own offline. Um, what else do I need to make sure to tell you? Um, yeah, so it may take a while. I think I'm scheduled. I have them scheduled out on Wednesday morning um, at mid, you know, midnight um, through the through January. So this will come out probably in <laughs> February. So Great. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting quite a, quite a backup there, um, which is great. So um, what else do I need to tell you? So my background is I'm a traumatic brain injury educator for the military. So the TBI center of excellence for the department of defense. Um, so I work with a lot of trauma patients and people that have had PTSD and TBI and that kind of thing. I'm really interested in yoga. Um, and we do a lot of alternative therapy or what do they call them in the military? Um, you know, alternative therapies, um, a complementary therapy, yeah. CAMs, CAMs, they call them, sorry. Um, yeah, so we, I'm very interested in what you, what you have to say about your work. Um, so are you ready to get started? Let's do it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, An Anissa, for coming on my show, Catalyst for Change, Stories of Resiliency. I'm really curious to hear about your story. What got you into doing yoga with um, service members, the veterans, and the general population that may have had trauma or, or traumatic brain injury in their past? Well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. 
Um, well, you know, life is a journey and I don't think anybody wakes up one day and says, Ooh, I'm going to become a yoga therapist and, <laughs> you know, I'm going to work with trauma. Um, I kind of found, found myself here. Um, it was, uh, about 2013, I was living outside of Fort Riley, Kansas, uh, in Manhattan, Kansas. And we had a lot of service members deploying and redeploying back. My husband was active duty at the time. And um, so we lived in the belly of the beast. Yeah. I was taking teacher training classes for yoga. And um, I had no intentions of ever teaching. I just wanted to keep myself safe. Um, it was just for me. Didn't want to go to anybody's class. But um, I kind of got the bug, started taking more classes, and these range of classes came up. Uh, the school that I was going through offered these courses called Warrior Courses, and they were all about PTSD and working with active duty and retired military. And I thought, well, I live in the belly of the beast. I might as well, you know, take these classes, be able to help those in my community. And um, what really wound up happening was that halfway through the first day, I realized that my own PTSD had really been holding me back and that the first person I needed to work on was me. Okay. And, um, and that kind of, you know, launched into this whole self-discovery time and um, being able to not only help myself, but be able to work with others. Oh, interesting. Do you mind elaborating a little bit more on your PTSD and what, um, what that was about? Uh, I'm a two-time rape survivor. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I know it well. Uh, my dad was a Vietnam vet. And so I didn't know it, but I grew up with it. Yeah. You know, so his PTSD. Yeah. With yeah. his PTSD. And um, I've lost a child. I've had a very traumatic birthing experience. I mean, you know, life, life happens. Yeah. And um, I seem to have... Um, you know, I, I've gotten to know PTSD pretty intimately. So um, I don't know if that's yeah. a wonderful distinction or not, but. <laughs> no, but that's really good. You come from a, a, a place where you understand personally how trauma is held in the body and what we, you know, you're figuring, you figured out on your own ways to help with that, alleviate that trauma or work through it through body work. It sounds like exactly. oh, that's wonderful. And I'm, yeah, I'm so glad that you found that and that you're healing and healing others through that journey as well. It's yeah. been pretty amazing. Yeah, that's wonderful. So you got started on your yoga journey just by, you know, getting, getting the bug and getting interested yourself and then bringing that to service members and retirees at uh, Fort Riley, Kansas. And yeah. now are you still in Kansas? We are. Okay. And are you teaching classes still at, at the military base? I'm not any longer. Um, I just decided that I really, as much, and I love, I love the military personnel. I absolutely adore them. They were some of my very favorite clients. Um, working with women who were like me, who have experienced sexual trauma and being able to um, see them change on a mat in, yeah. in an hour is so priceless to me. Um, I really resonated with that. And so I've really kind of devoted my whole practice to working with women who are like me. Mm. Um, that being said, I have to tell you, the service personnel are absolutely, the, they're just hysterical. Um, <laughs> you know, these big burly guys come in and they're like, oh, you know, we're going to like do a little stretching and then we're going to take a nap and, you know, this is all girly stuff. And, and then we get through the class and they're like, they come up to me very quietly and they're like, uh, ma'am, that was really cool. Oh, that's that was neat. That, that wasn't what I expected. I'll yeah. see you next week. Oh, that's and then they great. come back and they yeah. come back and they come back and then they bring their friends and they're like, dude, you got to try this. This chick is amazing. Wait till you, you're going to feel things you haven't felt in your body before. And, you know, <laughs> that's cool. They were nice. The best. I loved it. And now the, the, the things that you did with the service members, was that more of like the standard yoga or was that still the TBI PTSD type yoga? No, it was absolutely the, the trauma okay. yoga. And it was amazing because, you know, they did, they had this really preconceived notion that, you know, there was going to be incense and people chanting and yeah. you know, whatever it is that was in their head. And it wasn't that. 
And, and they were like, when is this going to happen? It's not like all that stuff isn't going to happen. This is what we're doing. Yeah. And they're like, well, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And are your classes different based on the population that you're serving? Or are they pretty, pretty much um, the same through the different populations? Well, you know, fitness-based yoga and yoga therapy are two different animals. Yeah. You know, if we look at yoga as being a big pie, half mm -hmm. the pie is fitness. And, you know, you've got your Ashtanga and your brick room and your, you know, hot yoga and um, aerial yoga and all that fun oh stuff. Yeah. And that's just totally based on building your body, which is a fabulous thing. And then on the other side, you have your, your therapy yoga. Yeah. And that is, you know, yoga for cardiac rehab and cancer and MS and Parkinson's and, you know, all of these things. And we are specially educated to help you with that need. Okay. And okay. so my class is very different than a typical class in a yoga studio, you know, down on your corner. Um, my lights always remain on. I never leave my mat. I hardly ever touch a person. Yeah. Um, I'm talking through the entire thing. It's like the Anissa stand-up routine for an hour. I'm constantly talking and it's interactive. I'm asking questions and we're talking and people are doing things with their body and they don't even realize that they're doing these things and they're releasing what they need to be releasing. And the, the whole premise is not to leave them alone with their thoughts. Okay. So you're constantly checking in with them and interacting with them. Is that we talk about food, we talk about sports, we talk about current events. We, I mean, you know, what's everybody doing this weekend? I mean, we are talking, it is sense of community. We're laughing, we do a lot of laughing. Oh, good, good. You know, and people are doing things with their bodies that they didn't even realize they could do. Okay. You know, they get into these poses and they're, you know, and then afterwards they're like, I feel so good. I'm like, and they don't even realize what they're doing. They just, because you're talking through it. It's just, it's like a get together. It's a community feel. And, yes. and all of a sudden they're like, wow, you know, my leg doesn't feel um, as sore anymore. Or, you know, I feel more movement in certain parts of my body. I feel lighter. I don't feel as stressed. I'm happy. Yeah. You know, I'm smiling, you know, things like that. And I'm not a talk therapist. Yeah. I'm not a social worker. I don't deal anything with that. My whole range of, of, of my scope of practice is to release trauma from your body. That's what I'm there to do is to help you do that. And so I am. But in the same course, you know, it's very scary for people who have PTSD to be alone with their thoughts. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, people kind of get worried. Oh, I'm going to go to a yoga class. It's going to be quiet. I'm going to, you know, there's not going to be much talking. And that's not what this is. We're talking, we're laughing, we're interacting, and they're not alone with their thoughts. Yeah. No, that's important to, that's important distinction because yoga, the traditional yoga that I think of, um, I mean, you have your hot yoga where they're telling you to move and do different poses or the Bikram, I guess is what they call it. Um, and then you have the ones where you're supposed to just relax and it's more meditative and like, you're supposed to just not talk and focus on your thoughts and your breathing. And this is like a sense of community. It's very different of, of how it presents itself to, to the clients that you serve. Now with women that you, that you work with, is that done in a different way? Do you talk about maybe different things? Are you constantly, you're constantly interacting with them and trying to get them out of their own headspace? We're constantly talking. Mm -hmm. um, it is pretty much the same thing. We may not talk about sports. We do talk a lot about food. Okay. Um, usually after my class, everybody wants to go and eat because we're all hungry. Yeah. Um, you know, pretty much it's the same thing. I, I talk about pretty much the same things. Um, you know, there really isn't much of a distinction. Um, even during Shavasana, which is our, our um, final relaxation. Yeah. Um, it's very different, you know, in a traditional class, you lie on your back, your palms are facing up, you know, but for someone with PTSD, that could be very, um, like feeling very exposed and naked. Yeah, yeah. And so the rules in my class are one, there are no rules. And two, 
you know, during Shavasana, if you want to lie on your side, if you want to lie on your belly, do whatever makes you feel comfortable. You know, do you want a pillow? Do you want a blanket? Do yeah. you want a snuggly? Like, what do you want to make you feel comfortable? And people get all curled up and, and cocooned up and I read to them. Oh, nice. Like what type of thing do you um, read? I have some wonderful books. There is a poet who writes uh, yoga poetry. Ah, okay. Absolutely outstanding. And I'll have to get you her name. She's just brilliant. Um, or I read a book um, about the emotional aspects of essential oils. Mm, interesting. And people really find that fascinating because they'll get up from final relaxation and they're like, I need to try that oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. Now, you know, do, you so. have, do you have the oils like a diffuser going in your class at the same time to create that, um, you know, that environment or however, however you. Yes, I usually do. Um, and one of the blends that I really, really like is um, tangerine and spearmint. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a good combo. It sounds like. Yeah, it's really lovely. And, and everybody, it seems to kind of wake you up enough. Yeah, but it's still, it just clears the senses. And so that's my fave. Okay, I'll have to try that. Yeah. So, so can you tell me a little bit more about the science behind trauma um, based yoga? Because oh, it's something really new to me. I haven't heard. I mean, I've heard of it, but I haven't really experienced it. So it's kind of, yeah, I'd love to hear more about the science behind it. This is where we get all nerdy. I love it. Yeah, um, let's get nerdy. <laughs> I love it too. You know, people don't think of yoga as being science-based. Yeah. You know, they think of it as, you know, you're moving your body and it's this new age thing. And quite frankly, it's all based on science. And when I learned this in my classes, I was like, oh, well, then why aren't we doing more of this? Like, this makes perfect sense. So um, the science behind it. Have you ever felt um, that your hips have been really tight? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, sometimes, especially runners say, oh, my hips are so tight. And, you know, yeah. when I hear people say that, I'm always instinctively thinking, okay, so what's going on in your life? Mm. Because we hold trauma in our psoas muscle, which is our hip flexor. Most people okay. know it as the hip flexor. Yeah. In, in yoga, we call it the psoas muscle. And that's where you hold a lot of your trauma your, all of your emotions, it's your emotional warehouse of your body. Yeah. And so the whole premise behind what I do is um, helping you to really get into that psoas muscle to help release the baggage. Okay. Now, this is really not an easy thing because the psoas muscle is the deepest muscle in your entire body. So mm -hmm. it's really hard to get to. Mm -hmm. So the psoas trail actually starts behind the knee and it goes up into the inner thighs, and then it's the actual psoas muscle. And then from there, it juts into the back. It goes all the way up the spine to where the spine meets the skull. Okay. So that's what we call the psoas trail. Mm. So in my class, I'm going to help you warm up the entire trail. We're going to, I mean, you're going to get a full body workout because we need to warm up the entire trail before we actually get into that psoas muscle. Yeah. Now we want to work that psoas muscle to exhaustion. So I hear a lot of people say, oh, my thighs, they're like jelly. They're quivering. Good. This is good because that shake is what helps to release the trauma, the emotion, the baggage. Okay. Okay. Some people don't feel it at all. And that's totally cool. They don't need to. Yeah. It's still working. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Cause my, what you mentioned, like I have like this clicking when I use the foam roller, I have this clicking in my, um, in my, my hip muscle or butt muscle right there or gluteus muscle. And it's just been there for years. And it's just, when you roll over it, it goes click, click, <laughs> but it's never been able to like come out. And so I'm going to have to check out some of the things that you're doing. Cause that, that would be really helpful. So it helps. And I notice, you know, that's how, when people say they have a shooting pain, you know, from, or like a, a nummy, nummy pain and those different types of pains can be released with yoga or helps to release through yoga. Is that what you're saying? Um, it can be, you know, we're really looking to work 
the psoas muscle to exhaustion to the point where it is quivering. Um, and, and the whole premise behind it is, so, so now we got to take a step back and, and actually look at what happens within the body when PTSD occurs. Mm-hmm. You know, most people think that PTSD is a mental health issue. And although it is, it actually starts in the body. And so um, have you ever seen two dogs fight? Yeah. What happens afterwards? I think they, I, you know, they move into their own directions and, you know, right. there's a release. They, yeah. And yeah. have you ever noticed that they shake afterwards? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They may shake. Yeah. Okay. So just like dogs, we have two different brains. We have the upper echelon brain where we spend most of our time and that's, you know, math problems and logistics and, you know, our um, emotional well-being is all housed there and how we respond to people. Um, So all of the the critical thinking is done there. And -hmm. then we have the reptilian brain and that takes care of, you know, the things we don't think about, breathing, blinking, you know, letting us know we have to go to the bathroom but it also houses our fight, flight, and freeze mechanism. Okay. And so at the moment that we are in a place where our brain is overwhelmed and it can't wrap itself around whatever is happening, we go into fight, flight, or freeze mode. We go into that reptilian brain. Okay. Just like the two dogs fighting. Okay. So now in order for us to kind of head back into the upper echelon brain, just like those dogs, we need to shake it resets the central nervous system and allows us to go back up into the upper echelon brain. Oh, interesting. So if you've ever seen somebody after a car accident or some, mm. some sort of trauma and you see them shaking, yeah, this is an important step. Mm. Now as humans, when we see somebody shake, what do we want to do? We want to stop it. We want to help we them. We want to stop it. We want yeah. to help them. We want to, you know, no, we have to let them shake. Okay. Oh, that's shaking interesting. Is the key. So if we don't shake, mm. now we have where PTSD is setting in. And it then shows up as mental health issues. Because we're trying to, our mind is trying to fix it and trying to stop the shaking I, is what I'm gathering. And, and well, your body just- really is like, I really need to shake. And so you have this c- conflict between mind and body. We have this conflict going on because we are stuck in the reptilian brain. Yeah. All of our critical thinking is happening in the upper echelon brain and we can't get there. Yeah. Because we have not reset the central nervous system. Well, guess what we're doing in that yoga class where we're making that so as muscle shake. We're resetting. Oh, I love it. (laughs) I love the science behind yoga. It's really neat. Yeah. Who would have thought? And you know, I, yeah, exactly. And I, you know, I read this book, the body keeps the score. Um, Mm. Oh, I love that. That was, huh? Yes. 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 Yeah. And it's, it was so interesting to me how so many things in our life, like trauma, like rape or car accident or, you know, childhood abuse or anything that's happened to you is held in your body until you can get rid of it. Um, or to release it or work through it. And we always think it's in the mind that we have to work on. We have to work on our thinking patterns and we have to, you know, think positive thoughts or, you know, force ourselves to think a certain way when it's really in the body that it's held on to. And so it sounds like, you know, this is really, yoga is really important to warriors, maybe people that have, you know, been in the battlefield or people that have been, you know, raped, um, or have had all these different traumas happen to them, it's really important that they release that. So it doesn't, you know, so we can connect back with that. Um, the bit, you know, the mind, the, you know, our thinking processes and, and not just that animal repti- reptilian brain. Yeah. And one of the major things that happens when we're stuck in that reptilian brain is that the brain and the body stop talking to one another. They are no mm. longer on the same page. Mm-hmm. And so in my classes, I'm, you know, every once in a while, I'm asking people, hey, where do you feel this pose? Yeah. And quite frankly, I don't really care where they feel it. I just want to know that they feel something in their body and that it's registering in the brain. 
And that helps them check in when you ask them, right? It helps them check in with their body. Exactly. So now we are starting to bridge that body and brain connection once again. And so, I mean, would I love for them to, you know, feel it where I want them to feel it, you know, or whatever? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. But as long as they're feeling something, that means that the brain and the body are back online together. Okay. Yeah. So they're, con- they're in connection. Your, your yeah. brain is saying, okay, I'm, I'm feeling that in my leg or my, you know, my hips. Right. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now what, how are, how are you doing your classes these days and during times of pandemic? Virtually. Okay. Virtually. And actually before the pandemic, I started moving everything online. I, I live in a very small town. Okay. Um, actually the livestock outnumber the people here. And so, um, and the yogas were, I, I'm sorry, the, the cows were just not into yoga. Oh so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I started this well before the pandemic, so I'm available online. Oh, nice. And so people get together on zoom is, is what I'm assuming, like yeah. a zoom class and you see people from all over the world. I mean, it sounds like you could see, I mean, pretty much people from all over the place yeah. in the same spot. Uh, okay. And what type of, like, are you getting people from all walks of life in your classes or like all age ranges, all genders? No, I only deal with women. Okay, right now. You, oh, that's what you said. I'm sorry. You're no, only dealing, okay. working I, with so women right I, now. I only work with women right now who have been sexually um, traumatized. Um, you know, I work with all age ranges, usually starting at 18 and up. I have worked with um, younger girls, teenagers yeah. who have been um, usually sexually molested. Okay. Um, uh, and that's been really rewarding. Um, but right now, um, I, I only work with women 18 and older. Um, and sometimes I work with the moms of, of daughters who've been um, yeah. affected. And so that's mm-hmm. been really fascinating as well to help them to be able to work with their daughters. Okay. So that's been really rewarding. Um, in January, I will be uh, releasing a membership for women. It'll be a monthly membership. It's called Phoenix Women. And, um, you know, there'll be recorded classes available. So if at 3 a.m. you wake up and your mind is racing and you want to get into a class, you can get into a class. Um, there will be live classes. There's going to be coaching calls. There's going to be all kinds of stuff within this monthly membership. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'm real. I'm excited for you. That sounds really empowering for these women and and uh, so now in your classes, I'm curious, how do you address the, 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 you know, rape or molestation in the beginning? Do you address that in your class or you just move right into the yoga? No, we don't talk about it. There's no need to talk There's about no it. There's no need to talk. Okay. Um, it's not talk therapy. It's yoga. It's body therapy. There is no talking about it whatsoever. Um, yeah. You know, this is about women healing Um, Now, that being said, I have a talk therapist. I see a therapist and I do take meds. Meds and talk therapy are absolutely important. Yeah. Um, But you also have to release it from the body. Mm -hmm. You know, your body is part of you. (laughs) It's not just your brain, you know? And so um, you have to treat the whole person. Yeah. And this is part of treating that whole person is with the body work. Wonderful. Well, it's been, you know, I'm really excited to hear about the things that you're doing and the people, the lives you're touching through your work. And it's just been a real pleasure. And I'm, you know, on my show notes, I'll have all of the ways that people can get in touch with you. Um, I I know you have a really nice website put together and you mentioned you're going to have an app in the future. So that'll be great. Within the next month, it's going to be released. It's called Trauma Healing Yoga. You can download it onto your phone and, you know, it's right there at your fingertips. And I think, especially for women who are like me, they're really going to like that privacy yeah. Um, you know, having it right there on their phone and not everybody needs to know that, you know, yeah, it is what it is, but a way for them to be able to touch in in case they need something. And a phone is so much more private than having it on a big screen in the computer. So, yeah. so, well, wonderful. It's been wonderful talking to you, Anissa. And um, thank you, thank and you so you... much for having me on. I've really appreciated it. Thank you. You're welcome. And you have a wonderful day. I really enjoyed too, it. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. All right. We'll cut it there. Cool. <laughs> All right. That's, that was great. And, you know, I'm sorry for <laughs> you did say you only worked with women now. So I kept going back and, <laughs> no, 
Okay. That, wow. That sounds really interesting. Cause I, you know, that what you mentioned about the hips, there's always this clicking and it was after I had my daughter, she's two now, but it was after I had my daughter and I did like the chiropractic, I did, you know, bar fitness. I did all these things to get back into shape. And, you know, it's just, it's hard to release that, um, psoas muscle, the hip flexor. So I'm going to look up that information you mentioned and yoga poetry. That Let was really interesting. That name. Yeah. Let me get you that name right yeah. now. Hold on one second. Okay. Her name is Donna, D-A-N-N-A, Falds, F-A-U-L-D-S. D-A-N-N-A, F-A-U-L-D-S. Yeah. Okay. That's, oh, that's a different spelling. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I hope you have a really good um, holiday season and you as well. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate, you know, being able to connect with you. I know that we tried in August and I, I apologize. Are you for feeling that. better? I know you had a surgery. Yeah, finally. Okay. Finally. Thank you. Yeah. So good, um, good times. Oh are, yeah. Are you military or are you um, connected with the military? I know you're connected with the military, but are you military? No, my dad is a Vietnam veteran and but I've I've never been a service member myself. I'm a contractor to the Department okay. of Defense. Yeah. <laughs> so the so you'll enjoy this. Um yeah. so I had my last baby, my last baby. Um when I was like 33. Okay. And I had him in a military hospital and I was too young to get my tubes tied. Oh, and how many but kids did you have? You have three. Two, but two, I was okay. done. Yeah, was yeah, done. yeah, yeah. But by army regulations, I was too young to get my tubes tied and they could not do it. Like oh. I'm on the table, I'm begging the doctor, please, please just like, do it. She's like, I'll lose my license. That's crazy. And especially and after a traumatic birth. I mean, like you mentioned, you had a traumatic birth. Yeah. My yeah. first one was, and so when she got in there, she was like, what the hell happened the last time? Oh said, no. She's like, I have to do some tidying up. And I was um, open for about 45 minutes after my son was born while she okay. tied up. So you had a C-section, it sounds yeah. like. Okay. Yeah, I had the choice. Yeah. And so, so fast forward now, I'm having these issues mm. and the doctor went in again and she's like, what happened? Oh, because the first one, they weren't able to clean it, figure it, it, it out. Was, it was a mess. Oh. Um, so I finally got my tubes tied. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But then it's more of a process. Yeah. When, when you have them, when you're not on the table giving birth or having a baby. Yeah, you know, and, but I was also having a, these other issues that I, I yeah. needed to address. So it, it, it was a nightmare and I'm just really lucky. I wound up, I did not have to have a hysterectomy as of right now. Good, good. But, um. Yeah, it's just kind of a freak thing that the army regulates when you can have your tubes tied or not. That's crazy. And I wonder, I mean, in the civilian world, do they do that? I think especially after you've had two kids, I mean, you should be able to say I'm done because it's <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. But, but other than that, yeah. Me when I can have my tubes tied. Yeah. Oh goodness. <laughs> the army, <laughs> the army and the regulations. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Very old school. Very, very old school in some ways. Yeah. But other than that, was your experience with this surgery pretty, pretty good with the army? Did you have um, it through the army? Well, no, I actually had it with a civilian doctor. So it, it, it went much better. Oh, good. Yeah. It went much better except for, you know, when she came to see me, she was like, uh, that was a shit show. What yeah. happened? Good thing they cleaned everything up and figured it all out. And yeah. Oh so, yeah. <laughs> So that, that's, you know, I, and she's like, oh, two weeks, you'll be back on your mat. No, it takes a while, huh? Yeah, it yeah. took a good month. Good month. Well, I'm glad you're feeling, it seems like you're feeling better now. So yeah, I am. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I, I really felt bad because I know you wanted to do this in August. Oh, it's okay. Like, oh, there's just so no way. Yeah, no, you have to feel a hundred percent to give yourself to other people. So I totally get that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, thanks yeah. a lot. And, um, you know, please, if you could send me that MP3, I would really appreciate will. it. And, yeah. um, okay. Let me know if you have any other questions or if you need any other info from me. Okay. I sure will. And I'll look at your one pager. You said it's on your website with all your social media stuff. 
Oh no, I sent it to you. I already emailed it to you. Okay. I'll look for that then. If not, then I'll resend it to you. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.